With the same score that Rita got on Icebox, TSM enter back the map of Vine and push us to a map number three. Welcome back, everybody. And this was a map that was a lot more dominant, a lot more TSM in the way that we expected to see them from the beginning of the series, Psycho. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is the TSM we were expecting. These guys have woken up. <laughs> the, the dragon has awakened. I mean, these guys are, are aiming sharp. Uh, Sin's doing his job. Gimon's clutching up. I mean, these guys are are looking like they should. I mean, you talked about Seven on the Gecko and an iconic uh, performance he usually puts up on Vine. These guys usually uh, use him as a big part of their win condition and him popping off on the Gecko, giving him a lot of freedom here, and uh, he's running away with it. Yeah, I also, like, sometimes we see these sky compositions, right? Their timings are pretty heavily, like, locked into her util. Uh, and so we can actually see, like, TSM a few times and kind of pick up on this and... They have a lot of, you know, defensive util, especially the deadlock stuff that, you know, requires some premeditation. Like, you do still need to, re like, respond, get information, and find the right times to use it. And there's, like, a few rounds that we even saw it in the B-roll. Like, a Proto is able to, like, you know, get a graph net down or, or you know, set set up at least a player for some extent so that really gives him uh, a bit of an edge. But in general, like, Tim's early round action was, was really good. You see there, like, Snowzine still, the way he looks to challenge showers, it's pretty volatile. It does open up Letter to, uh, you know, go a, a player down coming into the round. But in general, this is like much more, like I said, what we expected to see from TSM. And you can see the post-plant post, post stats here. I mean, TSM's defense were really good. Their retakes were, were, were rock solid. Um, and, and that's really what, what what you want to see with a comp that kind of has the deadlock that doesn't want to be put in post-plant, uh, uh, you know, necessarily. It wants to try and catch people off with that util early. So um, really nice to see from TSM. Big wake up. Big wake up for sure. And you know, that that's the big question now. Now that both of these teams have awakened, both of these teams are getting their feet underneath them, ready to having their recovery from their performance yesterday. I mean, even on Bind, this is a much better performance than they put up yesterday, despite the fact that Bind is just traditionally not a great map for them, right? So going into Haven here, much more even footing and an opportunity for Reddit to, to really take it to them. But if TSM are, are going to keep shooting like this and, and working together as, as well as they are, it's going to be a tough task for Reddit uh, to go up against them on this Haven. We'll see how poised calls this map and uh, is able to lead his team. It could really depend on the playbook here that the teams have, especially as we got the chance to see on Vine, the playbook for TSM on that defensive side, it had so many different ideas. And especially because you're introducing this uh, composition that we're not so used to seeing with the deadlock over that you were mentioning a bunch. And when you're bringing something new, when you're bringing something slightly different compared to what everybody else is doing in this map, you need to have some great ideas around it. And there's a couple of rounds to back up the, the ideas and the, the reasoning behind them playing this, this deadlock compared to to everybody else opting for something else. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's like, if you're watching TSM's footage, it's really nothing new. They've played with this comp for so long, but look at this play here. This is so filthy. There's a very distinct timing on this hit happening sort of mid to late in the round here. So Proto hears everybody from Reta set up in Octagon, and he's there, obviously ready to play off of the grab net into the, the paint shell combo, and he has that Annihilation available, which may even be overkill at that point. But TSM had a really good feel for timings, even on the defense side, uh, like early in the rounds. They make these pops down B long. They make these pushes out Oh hookah, right? Seems like holding an angle, catches out a Snowzine who's in Showstopper, and then they flood on out. So it's really great to see like these little timings, and again, they're finding great openings to, to turn up the heat against a team that is uh, the ones that are really trying to rest the initiative in the early rounds. This is really good. This is like really good intuition, I think, from uh, TSM in general on Bind. A big turnaround, like I've kind of been harping on a bit, but uh, it's a huge recovery from our NA number two. Yeah, certainly. Intuition, awareness, their rotations are great. Their team play is, is phenomenal. I mean, even in that clip you just saw, that's three of their players working together flawlessly. They have the read, they understand where Red are coming from, and they know how to shut this down with their utility. They're playing a utility first game. Uh, they're playing a let's trade with my teammates game instead of an individual peak game. And that's what we want to see. And it's what we were not seeing from them on Icebox. So can they carry this into Haven? I mean, that, that is a question, especially because you you were mentioning a little bit about the Haven and how it plays out for TSM, what it can mean for TSM today, but even more, I feel like Borreta, after they got their first map win, now they have a pretty good chance on this map of Haven. Just looking at what they've been doing, Psycho. Yeah, I mean, if, if they can take a look at uh, TSM's troubles on Haven yesterday and try and extrapolate some information on where these weaknesses are um, and how they were being exploited, I think that's a really good start for these guys. If they can get the pistol around, if they can 
uh, start hitting some of these weaknesses they saw exploited yesterday, that will give Reda the advantage to, to claw their way into this early. And if they get this early lead and put TSM on the back foot, we've seen how scrappy these, these maps can get from TSM, right? When they're feeling the nerves, they're getting a little nervous, right? These rounds are getting a little way too close. Uh, you know, that's what Reda really need to do is, is put the onus on TSM, right? And say, hey, look, we... We saw you, you know, we, we saw you get exploited yesterday on this map, despite the fact that this is one of your better maps. So uh, if they're able to do that early, uh, it will bode well for the rest of the app. Looking at the game yesterday, it felt like Galoris had definitely done their homework on TSM because they really quite often try and put Sim in some fairly creative spots to make use of that operator he wants to pick up. And on multiple times when Sim goes to a, a conventional location, like let's say A-Long on defense, right? They fault line him, they flash him, they smoke him out. They, will, they were willing to spend that early round util to basically put Sim in an awkward spot. TSM tried to double stack him in sewer with an operator. A similar look to what we saw from them in hookah on bind defense, right? Getting him set up with a couple players there to find the first pick. Maybe they flood from there. That's the kind of play we've seen them from them a couple times. But this was read into and it was shut down constantly. I do think like the day makes a big difference and whether those plays work or not has a lot to do with Sim individually and, and how everyone plays around him. But it felt like TSM were downloaded a little bit on that map. They do want to go for those aggressive, aggressive pops on defense, even if they're not running a double duelist setup. Uh, and, and the map of Haven, right, is the kind where you can, you know, get someone out on an extremity, give up a site, stack, you know, over to B and A a little bit uh, and try and make a play happen there. So wasn't convincing, wasn't particularly impressive from, from TSM, but their level today, if you use Bayern as an example and how cleanly they took that game, seems like they're really comfortable. They're happy to throw in a bunch of variations and it has been catching Greta off guard. And that says a lot because Greta are pretty methodical, right? They're not the kind of team that usually gets taken aback by this, this aggression, this push up from their opponents, as we saw in their domestic region. Something TSM are doing is making it a little bit harder for Greta to, to get a feel for the tempo they're trying to apply. Yeah, definitely. And that's the beautiful thing about getting deeper into these group stages, right? And, you know, they're not the first ones to play TSM. They don't have to do the homework. Galleries did it for them, right? And they can look at that map and say, hey, look, galleries did their homework. Here's what they found. Here's what they exploited, right? What do you, what do we think TSM will change? And that's going to be the question, you know, uh, the issues that they saw, the, the anti stranding that galleries did that worked out. How quickly can TSM shore up those weaknesses? And how quickly can uh, the other team here pick up on those and punish them for it, right? Is this something where Reddit can say, hey, look, like we we saw you stumble here, we're, we're gonna punish you? Or is this something where Sim is gonna say, hey, look, I got shut down with the operator last game. That's not happening today. This is Haven. This is an operator map. This is something where Sim can control the pace of the game as long as his team is not allowing him to get pushed off of angles and get shut down. They need to be flashing him back onto angles, get him back onto lines and letting him control the pace of this game and, and and really contest these zones strongly and make Ritter work for every inch of map control that they need. And so seen over this series, he's been out of his chair a couple of times for, for very good reason. Yeah. Right? That, that, oh, so hype. that pistol ace over there on, on buying defense was astonishing. So his individual level is clicking today. Uh, and that's why half the reason why Retta had looked so different over the course of this series. But so seen has a map where he's 20 and 16 with 306 ACS and they only win six rounds. It's astonishing. Uh, he is positive in first kill, first death at six and four. He's been involved in a lot of these early engagements. He's He's been very effective over the course of the map. The problem is, is that, you know, what else is happening around him? If there's a round where Snowzine loses that early fight against Sim or something like that, it feels like Greta are basically there's no chance that they're going to win it. You need to come up in around him. And that's what I said yesterday. I thought that he and Suter were actually stepped up in a big way. But like they were built for the stage. They were very comfortable here. Want to see that from the rest of this team and Maurice has a lot on his shoulders because he's trying to call against this team. Uh, and we've seen like TSN's mid-rounding be very, very solid as well. Their defense setups are very, very tight. Uh, and and Muniz is also trying to you know step up in a lot of these situations and often finds himself in early engagements. He's one in three first kill, first death from bind here. So that's something that might be a point of vulnerability. And we talked a lot about what TSM were doing yesterday on that map of Haven, but we actually haven't seen a Ferreta in quite some time since the grand finals for the, for the for Latin America when they were playing against All Knights. And that was one of the maps that they lost, but there's a chance here, Psycho, that we can see a compositional change. We can see something new that they're bringing to the table. And I mean, that should be the expectation because it's been long enough and because they know they want to win this match. They know they want to win Ascension and that's just one of the steps to take to make Oh, it. yes! Oh, there it is. I love this. I like I this. love this. This yep. absolutely flattened Reta in their final against um, All yeah. Night. They, every round they're fighting, like, off the rip. 
it is like so much to deal with. I mean, you know, Dante Deus is a little bit of a different being, right? The guy just throws his U2 and jumps right on him. Great use of those sort of uh, fast lanes. But I'm really looking forward to this. TSM uh, need to show us more of those defensive pops that we saw on Bind here. Uh, and I think it'll work out just fine if Sim can stick these landings. Oh, and on the other side on Reda, they've foregone the breach in favor of putting Maurice on the sky. I mean, this is this is an interesting choice. Stylistically, it's not something you often see on Haven. Breach is a, a very strong agent, so we'll see if this gamble pays Viper. off for him and what kind of interesting tactics they have cooked up for us. Yeah, the double controller not even seeing the Sova anymore. So we're going to see how this map is going to play out with some changes that we expected on the side of TSM that it ends up, or in the side of Red Up that ends up being the side of TSM. Let's find out who gets this win of this third map and let's send it to the casters. The flashbacks are coming back and uh, Reta, I, I mean, are they happy about it? Maybe not, but <laughs> they do have a possible game plan against it. Fancilli, we've seen, uh, you know, that Neon composition go back uh, against Reta Esports like yeah. they talked about on the desk. I mean, Uber brings up a great point. They smothered Reta when it was All Knights playing and that was because of the terms of retakes they were playing on the defensive side. And this yeah. is where TSM starting things off here. Yeah. Uh, or sorry, it was when Reta was playing the defensive side and, and All Knights were playing. But we'll talk about that in a bit. We're going live right into the pistol round. As Snow is trying to get some information now towards the garage, but it's traded one for one. Yeah, they're ready. And everybody's lives as they try to connect themselves onto the site, but it's they have to take it back pretty flawlessly. I mean, here there really isn't any worry going on to uh, what's happening on the attack for it. The fights, of course, though, aren't winning out too flawless. See, as Gamont now, the only person left onto site with a spike, but still taking into this 1v2. And is literally playing Ring Around the Rosie. It's going to be quite impossible to take this one you know, by stride, especially now with the one way making lane. Just not hitting the shots, though. Snow's low on HP. Spike planted. One enemy Free remaining. Killed. Yeah, that might just be it. That does damage to it. 1v1. Although, there it goes. So they're maybe getting a little bit too aggressive. They could play time, but they don't need to. They trust in themselves. A big 4K coming out from Suther. And something that we wanted here for Reta to really step up to the plate now on the defensive, or should I say, on the pistol round. It's very well converted, but as you saw how aggressive they were, we have a chance now to talk about these compositions. This was actually a combination of so much utility here that came out from this type of composition that Reta wasn't ready for. But for Reta, if you're looking at it, they also changed their composition too to try to fight back against this jet and breach that also TSM uh, kind of like had to shy away from because the 4-1 setups for them weren't really working out. So both of these teams trying something new here and bringing it to the plate. And we'll see what, which one's gonna get the better result here. Who gambled better now on the whole composition overhaul that you're seeing here from both of these teams. And you're definitely seeing things coming out from Reda so far. So they're using this G2 Viper wall that was coined here towards the Ascension side of Challengers even last year to allow for them to lurk up, but it's a four fire stack right in here. Literally not remaining. really having to do too much. Uh, Heard it, I mean, especially now with the buys coming through. But yeah, flawless round. 30 seconds coming off into what the next one's going to look like. Though Poised is literally just waiting here. Yeah. Spike planted. You see the idea around the double control controller, sorry, being played by Reta and yeah. the what was being cooked up here by this team when they were playing against TSM in terms of these vetoes. While you're bringing even into the first map, while you're bringing in ice uh, sorry, ice box in the first map, even right over here, just because you're trying to nullify Sim on Jet on this off. What does Sim like to do here? What did he try to do as well when they're applying a defensive side against Galorius was he was peeking and over peeking every single time, a second time. Even if he doesn't have a dash anymore, no more tailwind, he'll swing back out and try to get an off kill, running an operator up as One soon as possible. Remaining. So these Viper walls, this double controller will nullify a lot of these sight lines and allow here for Reta to explode a little bit more here on the attacking side. And you're already seeing this second round too. Snowzine is not buying a marshal. He's not buying an outlaw. They're definitely leveraging, sorry, the wall to be more aggressive on the dashes on sites. Oh, and that they're so good at too. Dude, all it takes is just a, a spray coming through the smoke from Sim. They got a free one. Dalzik, no longer there. They're going to have to rely on Southern now to be able to get themselves onto the C site. But it seems like they're a proto checking on Cam and covering themselves before a bad time. It's a split towards the C site. 
fault line that came through from the A-Link from Poise. No stun, so that punishes. Marisa there's a playing from behind. That's an opening sight. An opportunity for Eretta, Eretta to even convert their bonus round. Welcome to my world. Oh, and that's great. They actually just created closure. Spike planted. That's not ready. On one end, or at least one part of the axis to get onto the site. It's not going to be easy from here on out, especially now for TSM. Seven does have that Odin big investment. So yeah, the back off might just be the best play. Yeah, Poison's and you're, you definitely saw it there. They were trying to really right pincer from the C site and A site connection from TSM side. The fault line that gets activated off Util, off what they see here towards the garage. But there's not really any type of positioning coming out from TSM to capitalize here on a flood back right into there. garage, a fight back into right the garage there. window that still allow Retta to get such a good ad advantageous position right into the C site, even a split towards a spawn that TSM right weren't ready for because they right had their there. two players anchored right up there. towards C. So you're trying to to try to you're trying to do a little bit of a surprise play around a Proto's utility on C with pages, but it wasn't enough here. So a, a great start for Rita in this third map. They pretty much had it, honestly, uh, in the back from the moment that Viper's Pit went down. I feel like they definitely forced TSM into a very very uncomfortable position, especially now. Like Viper's Pit down seven, having the Odin, they knew. There was a big investment into this that TSM just could not afford to lose too much. So now, yeah, forcing them into a save. Pretty good into this round, seeing what they can do. Standing ahead. It's the second time right now, too, but end up from this round into round number three that they activated snoozing into the garage. So they have to keep an eye on that. And Sim so far doesn't mean any type of... I mean, he could just fight through the wall. He, that's two kills. First bloods that TSM gets through a Viper wall that gets activated in the very beginning. Now they're reading into that. Look, way more pressure going into holding into the garage door. But a great lurk out from Nagzit that could maybe catch some rotations. He's going to hear seven rotate across, and this is going to give an opportunity for Reddit to just book it. Tempo up here towards the A side and go for this A plant. Oh, the slow approach, too. But nobody's there. At this point, TSM just waiting to lure out Retan positions that they're not even expecting people to be at, but they do have the A site cleared. The extremity is now slowly making oh. its way there for Nags that not too far, or else things could go very, very bad. That was so close. He would have been caught into a crossfire, and you see that when we're talking about booking it, they still couldn't because his lurk path was in towards shower, uh, towards sewers, and boss. nobody was really towards long, so left. they wanted to make sure that nobody was there. Now they could go for a plant. There's already a three-player rotation out from TSM here in the Pulse plant. When they have it at least a lot to work with here too because yeah for delzik to be able to push that smoke down to create some sort of distraction of those sim working in favor of themselves but it doesn't work the util is amazing nobody knows what's going on boys big on the breach util to keep themselves on the site for tsm they work through with it and they deserve it that is such a nice little protocol coming out from tsm a fate of flood into the site. So first the fast lane comes out tied in with the fault line. That baits out the paranoia from Delzik towards the spawn uh, from hell. So they know there's a position there and a, there's a crossfire set up for sure for Reddit pretty much at this point. So the aftershock comes in, gets that pick, you flood back right after and everybody can just focus now towards the graffiti right here because you already nullified every any type of defensive play and defensive hold that was out there towards hell. They're very nicely done here for TSM to stay, remain calm, despite them losing information and map control over on the A side. And this is now something that, once again, you have to continue to try to adapt now for Reta, because despite this being a composition here from All Knights, this is much differently played by TSM. It's not as aggressive on the retakes, though, as, you know, they, they had for the AK side. Hey, they've learned their lesson, though. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> There's only one round coming through there. here from TSM so far in the retake. Right there. They, uh, they got it in the back, just kind of waiting for, <sighs> at least now for that, that huge information gather going down towards short. They didn't see anybody just yet, though. Sim in a pretty good position and the ultimate readily available for a potential take back. Yeah. TSM doesn't look like they want to really uh, fall back into the sights. Off camera, off trip, 
Maybe a double stun here from the breach and the neon, and here it comes. Oh my god, it's already down to the, the back of Slice, but missing! And incredibly unfortunate, but nobody was there what? alongside. The amount of util expended, everybody's blind, I can't see! And now, finally, being able to pick themselves back up, that's huge! Uh, at least for the side of an Anta, they still do have the site. The spike is planted down, and there's not a lot of util to utilize here, other than maybe Poise trying to distract whatever's going on down inside of Hell. Yeah, reposition goes down. After Shock 2, so they trade off big pieces of utility, so a big advantage now for Retta, especially when the Paranoid doesn't hit much. One enemy Kill remaining. Down. And they got it. Yeah, everybody already coming down onto side boys left alone to it. And it's Muriz and Dalzik that are able to just shut it down. Haven is looking a lot better. You're definitely, I don't know if it was a proto or a sim at this point, but the combat review that comes after he dies and realizes that he'll get 10 damage to Muriz when he's hit by a trip. And he's just spraying and spraying through there and never gets it. And it was that missed pick that allows here Muriz to come out for the swing and a trade in the end for these last two kills to allow here Reta to get the round. That's so unfortunate coming out here for TSN because they had the right setup for it to really flood back and fight back. But somehow the trip kill was just a cosmetic at this point. Reta now take the lead by three. And there it's once again continuing to contest towards this age oak. It doesn't matter how many times Sin got picks here with the rifle. He's going to try to do it with the op now. And it's spotted and heard quite early by Reta in this round. They know there's been some sort of pushback, although, it, I mean, regardless, knowing the op is there and finally having your util placed down, it creates some level of insurity. So now they're going to try to reach up if you're Reta and try to find that placement as to where everybody is. TSM now especially. Not really able to find much with that Sova drone. It's going to be a stalemate. We're back at the mid of Mark, so now it comes down to selling these fakes. You see the insert from Maris already towards Garage. I think he made already, already a little bit of noise, which is why you're seeing GMD rotate a little bit and they're strong siding the C site. But then again, out towards A, there's still the op available now, still being watched down towards Long. Seven looking to assist here with the Odin. And also GMD is probably ready to throw a smoke here right into the default box so that we can dance around and play around it. Sim just got punished. Left. Maybe up Giraffe's nose and is literally just trying to put themselves back on, but there's nothing they can do. Everybody on the side of TSM trying to become wolves, but instead Last get taken down by Delzik. And Reta, they Spike pretty planted. much just demolish. They get the site, the A site, completely hard to just fathom how they can retake it on the side of TSM. And that's why a lot of these rounds for TSM, the win con is from the rise of the fall of Sim. Pretty much at this point, when you're looking at when they lost that heavy, uh, when they lost heavily, sorry, on Haven against Galor uh, Galoris, it was also on Sim not landing those first op shots down towards those sewers, trying to at least hold an angle because they're giving him a lot of responsibility and trust to be able to lock down one site so they could stronghold on the other end. And as soon as you miss that shot, and this time you can't dash away and get punished the way that you did, and it really allows here for Reta to really up the tempo and overtake the site. Yes, you tried to throw those smokes and whatnot, but you're pretty much playing on a one and done for seven with the Odin alone inside the site. There's just too much utility coming through and already great positioning out from Reta to really hold that site. So now TSM are realizing here that their take back towards this, uh, this flood retake on the A site mm -hmm. is being heavily damaged at the very beginning here when they lose these players that cannot get at least one for their troubles inside that site. You might have to change things a little bit here and maybe start playing the Cypher potentially on this A side so they can opt down towards C. This is also very common that you currently see in TSM setups, but they, they're seeing that that constant pressure coming out from Reta, Reta sorry, towards A so far. It's crazy too, because for TSM, man, they were doing so well for the retakes and it felt, I guess now, you know, we've seen Reta time and time again, like be able to, to kind of, Get out of reposition themselves and, and find those adjustments to, to counter TSM. And right now they know, okay, well, all we really need to do is just use a little bit more of that util to keep themselves pushed back. And we have absolutely everything that we that we need to withstand that, which has been working out pretty tremendously here. But Eta now looking for the C site, which seems like the difference, though the spike's still planted in spawn, so not definite. Exactly. They're just trying to find information right now. They know that TSM's on an eco. They're trying to find where the stack is. TSM loves to do these stacks on eco rounds. 
And they also have the overdrive available by Sim. So a combination of that with a fault line could do some heavy damage. So that uh, they, they went for a scouting mission. Already the dog came out very early before that minute mark. There are these trades. Taking down left and right. Oh. Big clear coming through from Nags at. Now they see sight. They know there's a little bit more leeway there to move into. And it's looking nice. Rotation already coming through, but not too much util from a proto to really keep watch of the C site. Though Poise might just be the biggest player of them all. 30 but it comes down left. to it, but it doesn't even matter. Spike 30 planted. seconds left. Poise, the only one left alive. Trying to save the rifle most likely here. Unless he gets spotted now by the alarm bot, this is this won't be a weapon save. <gasps> oh, okay. Well, spotted and taken down is Nagzit. Rotates back. There you go. Stopped by Delzeek. Even Reddy was on the other side. Snows even with the outlaw. If he needed to go for the train. But you definitely see it right now. Is the amount of times that Reddy was pressuring towards the A side. A timeout's being called. And then after that, they go towards uh, the C side to really just have full control of that map. TSM in their composition, they're still trying to just body peek at this point. Instead of really trying to go for any type of information from Seven's Util. But it's also understandable because they are on a much lower buy and they were trying to go for a surprise play. So they thought they had the timing walking out here down towards mid, especially when they heard the dog at the beginning of the round. But Eta stayed patient back towards the spawn to punish every single push as that came out from TSM. And it's so great, but they don't hear anything, actually. Going towards the back. This is huge, it though. Delzig with a TP. And it's unfortunate. They know what exactly they're aiming for. They've heard the flash. They see the TP. TSM. It might just be the time for them to really reel things back in. I mean, already leading this down to a, a huge player disadvantage. And finally, the ultimates come through. And the headshots are in. It's over for Edetha. There's nothing they can do. It started off well, though. Uh, again, another type of garage crunch like they did towards that pistol round in round number three, except for the TP towards the back of the spawn. Delzik stuck it, went for a paranoia, but instead threw it towards that C link, trying to fake somehow a pressure towards the front B site. And all the players of TSM were, were able to evade it just by their positioning, not having to move around. So no footsteps were being heard. They hear the footsteps on the other end as Reta is trying to push back towards the spawn for once again a C split. And everybody got punished there. So unlucky on that timing. A nice so read at the very beginning or a nice drive for Reta to start things off. It could have caught really TSM off guard if that paranoia did hit. That would have been three players right there. But at least Reta from the amount of plants that they had and focusing on Nagzet, they have a very strong lockdown here to potentially try to hit this B site. I've drafted. Try to see whatever's going on. Over towards the CT site, but nobody's there. Instead coming down towards the back side. Huge possibility for something more, especially now with that ultimate coming through, but it doesn't work out the way that they plan, though, for that, that they do have to find some sort of difference here on the C site. They already broke the camera, too, so Ifoto didn't want to save the camera for a retake play. He tried to look for the aggressive information, especially, I mean, the smoke already came out towards the garage, so this could have been an important camera. And with that lockdown, there's just so much space Not taken now by Retta. Back for a late lurk towards the B. Oh this is going to be something to pay attention now on Nagzik's position. Which it might help though. Smoke. Not doing too much, but doing just enough. Kind of stalling for time to leave Delta with a better position here. Although not checking just behind. Still remains. manages to find one. Although Sim left with Nags and is not going to be able to do it finally. That first comes through. But again, the defusal's been faked and they know that it's there <laughs> for them to take oh in the Zippo clutch. And that's how you take advantage of playing on land, doesn't even care that he could drop down the window, make some noise because there's a strong chance that they still don't hear it on the side of TSM. Makes it up, catches him off guard. Uh, the potential that they could have stuck there for seven, but he was trying to find that timing to the wall bang with the Odin. And Nags had read that perfectly to win that one versus two Zippo clutch. And that was much needed here for Reta to continue with this stronghold that they have here on their attack side of Haven. Here comes, once again, that TSM setup. 
Again, different composition, but same look overall. Four players grouped up now towards the A choke. It has been given up in the last few rounds here for Aretta, so there's an opportunity to surprise him when the smoke dissipates. Just waiting for the perfect moment. Dude, this is so good from Ploys to TSM already finding one of their own. But they just, like, how do they just continue to find some? Regardless of the position they're in, right there and then, you don't know who's going to win it up. 2v2 oh. to get the finding. The advantage. That was huge. It's beautifully done there by Retta towards the end, too. When the wall comes down and you think that there's only one, especially with the first kill that you got through the smoke once again, coming out from Sim, this time onto Maurice. But for the rest of TSN, they didn't know where the other players were at. And uh, they got caught off guard here with how many bodies were being set up here towards the H Oak. So great conditioning being utilized so far here by Aretta. 30 seconds left. Well placed. Everything pretty well balanced as well. They do have a molly. You know, to use for stall. If anything, they're in the clear, right? And I thought yeah. that they are, you would you would expect them to be able to take away from this round, right? Information already given away. They know that they backed off. Now they stalled for some time. Stupid. Torrent sees it first. They throw the one way. There's no Last cage coming out from me, Proto. Wow. Yeah, it was going to be a guaranteed win here for Ereta pretty much at this point with how spread they were in the crossfire setup for the swing, especially with their Proto with the Guardian. Yes, you're good for the one taps, but for a swing across on the other one, it was going to be very difficult. But look at this right here. Not spotting Snow in that corner. Really boy the plans here from TSM trying to really push forward. And this, unfortunately, should have been shots that were won. That's unfortunately a phantom moment there from GMD onto Delzeke. 140 headshot. And that was the 140 that kept Keep it cool. the dream alive here for Redder to win that 2v1 in the end. Eco round now for TSM. Gamble to walk towards mid, spotted by the turret. This might activate a little bit more pressure now for Aretta to tempo up, and it's going to be on that seaside. But the U tool and C might make things harder than they need to be. Oh, the timing. Do they have backed off, which is good because the A side now they know it's clear. Souther is forcing a slight rotation over, but the spike isn't there yet. Might get caught out, but it's a beautiful shot down when they literally on the rotation. Everything was just too good. At this point, you 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 saw the the fakes, the smokes coming out for the fake on the C side. Then you went for the seekers, but on top of that, you had that lurk coming out from Suther out towards A long, and he heard the owl drum. And they know here if if they're the team that Dan Dry was mentioned before that likes to study their opponents and like and like to see how they play. They do a lot of these four one setups for TSM. So as you hear the drone from Seven out towards the A side, he usually plays it alone in his four one setups if they're strong holding towards C and B. And it's just an easy kill, a backstab, and we're looking to see a black light fall is potential. Uh, all of that, yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> no, but it's silly. It's okay. Retta, <laughs> Retta, they've been, they've already been, uh, already been on a roll so far. And honestly, all thanks to uh, literally everyone. I don't, I don't feel like it's been like a, a, a certain individual that has really pushed this team to where they are now. I think they've just been reading its TSM so, so well on the attack. This is definitely a great look that we're currently seeing here from the Latam team. The number one C that comes the, comes in now towards these playoffs to hopefully ascend into the Americas. They were the team that Uber mentioned before had to reverse sweep against all Knights to make it into this number one seed, into this position. A team that was very dominant in the Latam region as well and fell short in their opener. But looking much cleaner and much better now in their second matchup against TSM, who they have been looking very hot moving into this event. Especially after their first win against a number one seed in Brazil, you were thinking that this streak would continue. This mm -hmm. new comp that comes out here for both of these teams, you have to think on the fly now for both IGLs. It's definitely here, Maurice, pulling it out right now for Eta. Shadows traveling. I don't know already, that smoke is just making it harder for Snows, and so they here. are going to... Kind of back off. Not giving too much in. TSM doing a solid hold, though, on the defense. Not allowing anybody in just yet. Especially with Maurice dying, that's less utility now for the execution for Retta. But the op, we mentioned it before, it was going to be more rifling coming in from Snow. But this time he pulls out the operator. So they're going to leverage him to try to get a slow pick into the site. 
No Blade Storm available unless they want to go for a last second juggle of the op into a rifle so that he can dash left. in. But definitely step one. Lurk in and try to get a pick. Just to already though the aunt making it harder for them to be able to get onto the site, but as the duelist but losing out on that opportunity to push yourselves forward, it might not be the best either way. Nine to three, nine to two, possibility for something bigger. Nine three actually coming through from TSM now. Uh, all good, all in favor of Reta down in this half, but TSM have the opportunity to take it back. I mean, Sim finally going to be able to use that neon uh, in, in a better light there on the attacking side. Definitely. Now you're going to look at it on the second half right now. I mean, it's three rounds on a defensive sign. It's not too bad. It could have been a little bit better, but you're, st you're definitely seeing here on a map like this, on a three-sided map, you have an opportunity to work that map a little bit more. And Poise, to me, is kind of like a junior finesse now when he's calling as an IGL. He likes these three-sided maps where he could actually work that map a little bit more. You hear it in the interviews. He feels like he's calling as good. His calling is very good when it comes down to these mid-rounding plays that he has to uh, that he has to do. This is also praised by Baby Bay when they grouped in together when they were playing together back in the phase days, trying to qualify uh, into champs going into like what 2023, I think, or 2022 at that point. So hopefully here, I mean, you're you're behind by six. Uh, this is going to be a very important piss round for you to call now on the side of TSM. Uh, with this composition, you have an opportunity to be very very quick. And there's, you're not playing against a Cypher that has trips or whatnot, right? So you still have a great opportunity to really run in and plant. You're looking at this double controller on the defensive side. You'll have to see how Soother is going to set up these defensive walls, but usually it's defensive walls for retakes. So this might be an opportunity for them to really be able to get free site control uh, for how TSM would hit these sites. This is it for them. For TSM to... to bring things back, you know, in this grouping stage. Either way, like, the series has gone really, really well in both of these teams' favor. I feel like this halftime is definitely going to make the difference, though. It's it's hard, right? Playing uh, on the attack, coming through. Actually, my apologies on the defense here in a map like Haven. So, uh, with this reset, with the proto finally being able to play... Actually, my apologies, not a proto, but, you know, the Neon being able to play a bit more into their comfort zone, TSM, uh, obviously you know, making the strategies already in the plays they need to kind of further themselves into this hat. Right there. I definitely think we're going right to see there. something different. I'm, I would say I'm not too worried, though. Snowzen has showed their capabilities with the op. I think there is a big hold kind of waiting to happen there, and, and honestly, right there. A, a big detriment there, too. Yeah. You see the retake wall being used by Reta is more towards the seaside, and to be able to flood back into a garage and back spawn, so... They have to try to take a little bit more control towards this garage, especially when all the KJ utility is being used here towards this B-side. Two nano swarms, one turret. I don't see any armor. Oh, there is armor for an exit, so he didn't go for the alarm bot. So he's going to solo anchor this spot. They play the retake towards the A-side, and they have a you know soft hold towards C. Two players out there now spotted by Delzy. Oh no, and stuck in the corner too. This is so perfect, but of course it doesn't matter. I was about to say timing isn't there, but of course it is. Our snow is in so good when it comes down to the ghost plays. Especially when it's not being checked. <laughs> if anything, though, it was a great combination that came out. I mean, holding towards that garage. If, if Soother was jiggling and seeing somebody towards the garage, he could delay by putting the wall up. If not, what happens here, you see him drop down. There's zero pressure coming in towards the garage. So he gambles to drop down, places a beautiful snake bite right towards the front. It, it Look at that. It's vulnerable. Two players are vulnerable. Two easy kills for Snowzine, who doesn't even need the vulnerability because he's just headshotting everybody. <laughs> but overall, it was just, unfortunately, uh, not a check corner by TSM that ends up being their demise in that pistol round. We talked about a very important pistol that he needed. And this is very uh, a very similar storyline now to TSM versus 2G yesterday. Losing both pistols, now forcing to go into a buy in their second round on the attack, especially with no spike plant. You know that the armor is low, the economy is very low, and this yeah. is such a big gamble. Oh, and that just completely destroys the purpose of that drone too, and that's got to suck.
So yeah, Simcoe's in by themselves because fault line doesn't necessarily work, but somehow Seller manages to pick one off on their own, closes themselves out as well. Either way, it's a TSM take onto the B site. They're good for now. Oh, no, but not for long, yeah. Terrible. At least there's that. <laughs> At least there's a pump flash <laughs> to come through and hold the anchored site. I mean, they're playing stingers, so you have to play inside. Too late. Beautiful and great so far. Both sides. Who's going to be able to run away with this one? Give themselves the opportunity for more. Maybe? Maybe not. Nine bullets left. And a swing without the weapon on. That's got to absolutely hurt. And of course, you know you always could count on GMD when you think it's going to be on one side. Finishing for the opponents. It's just GMD, sorry, stepping up to the plate. And I don't think it should be the M that's capitalized there, it's the D. Because yeah. he played that so well on that left side A connection. With the L-Law picked up by Snow that was trying to dash in. I mean, at first I was, the reason why I said what was, why the hell is Seven running in with his knife in hand into the B site, trying to get a plant. They have no smokes there on that connection. And thankfully, GMD is able to save that round. Okay. I guess Sim's saving this one though. <laughs> At this point, TSM, they, they're just getting really, really good with rolling with the punches right there. Of course, smoke was supposed to be a problem, but it wasn't. Now, slowly moving themselves up. Snows in might just be able to find one. Possible, but the pain is there. Although Proto walks away completely unfazed, nags it. Now trying to find one to try to run away with, and that's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. The teamwork that went into that one. You will definitely... I think because of that death, it's too far to protect that weapon, so... Not too sure what poised head, but there's an opportunity to be picked up here by Reta. Plenty still comes down for TSM. It, could, it it still has to be clean here. They have to get all these picks with the Laura by that Reta has. Right here. And that's good for a proto at low HP. They're gonna lock it in now. Sam doesn't want anything to do with whatever's going in onto site. At this point, all they need to do is just spray the location of which they know where the spike is. There's not too much to worry about. Post plant positioning as well, but there it goes. Damage already there. And the paranoia as well. This creates a huge, huge problem where you can't do anything unless Sim has something to say about it. And that it might just be, of course, Spike unable to be defused by Reta. And you got TSM taken in another round. But again, another anti-eco here that they only survive with three players uh, at this point because of these timings that the Reta is currently catching uh, in this Laura buy that they have. Look at that other pick that came through from Snowzine. Almost got that one on the Sim. I think that was a body shot that came through for a 101. So now you're looking at it here for, for um, a pro and the rest here of TSM. They're, they're definitely still going to be able to buy this round. But the more I here that they enjoy. chip away at the economy on the side of Reta, the more it's going to stay low in yeah. He might finish it right there. I mean, you, they still have a five-round lead, so they can play the long game so far here against TSM. TSM, they're not out of the pit so far, winning this second-round four spot that they had with stringing these rounds. This is, what, three in a row that they have so far? Or two in a row that they have so far? Have to continue to be clean here on how they want to hit these sites if they want to stay alive in this game. dog a little destroyed. bit later into the rounds to see what's going on and that was beautiful it was great they've gathered yeah. the information they know this might be the possible hit hmm. hey, they're just really pausing so far here for tsm and that flash that's a good information at least indicator that they're trying to go for a, uh, for a late hit towards the a site and tsm they don't want any of that smoke. Already rotating out to try to split towards the C site, but we're with 35 seconds left on the round, and there's still all of that KJ utility up. This is perfect so far here for Ereta to still get information into the late game. We're going to run it back to all the way down towards the back of site, though. Nags at keeping it intact. TSM, all they need is this. But of course, player disadvantage there. GMD getting better with it, too. Not too much to work with, though. They can't really collect up. Phantom or a Vandal, still stuck up with the Bulldog. Though Reta give themselves at least that 11 of 5 
a possible match point. We're getting closer and closer, and it gets scarier and scarier each time. A great anchor play there by Nagzet towards that side. Del Z, yes, he gave his life away and his body away for that death, but it also allows her, Nagzet, to just continue to focus on that strong side to help the support of the rotate back from the eight joke. And with the delay that he had, he understood that he lost a teammate from Delzik on that side, and he could be pushed any second. So he stays tucked towards the left side of Gong to make sure that G can't get picked off here by GMD that was waiting the whole time just to try to get that pick. And by the time he got that pick, everybody else just died within that site, and there was already a rotate that came through towards the eight choke. So that was a nice display of defensive play, anchored play by Nagzet to just to make sure that they capitalize on the round. Great selfless plays that calls out the timeout here for TSM with Reta now at 11 to five. I can see they're sweating, drinking water. The tension is high. Like it, it really is. They weren't expecting this on the side of TSM. Put in a really difficult position, especially after the banger of a map they had last time. They thought they were going to run off that high and now it, it's completely folded. So... How well can they pick themselves back up? That's about the result. We've seen the players of TSM uh, do incredibly well at, at, you know, really last second decisions and and being super, super good at these tense moments and picking themselves back up. But it gets harder and harder as, you know, a lot of these players start to pick it back up, especially here on the side of Delzik. Yeah, as we mentioned, it was only a matter of time pretty much at this point here. If Reta continues this way to chip away at the economy. Look at the economy that comes out of TSM now, and even a first blood out on the sim, holding it out with the outlaw. By the hero! What a connection there on Terry Proto. Oh my gosh. Bike There's no a. way. <laughs> Dude, that's a violation too. And now what can you do? You got a vandal. Okay, that's great. GMD goes down. And now that's another round win. So yeah, we've hit that match point. This is where TSM really Match do have to point. question, how are we going to bring this back? The movement around Snowzine right here around the A site. I mean, yes, he's eventually going to have some support coming through, but he's pretty much holding that on his own and just keeps dancing around, getting value out Bladestorm, value out of the Outlaw. The amount of potential that comes out here out of the Star Duelist of so many of these teams in Ascension gives me a lot of hope that they could really step up to the plate going into uh, the VCTs next year. If not with this team, with not if not with any team ascending, potentially even Poach going into next year. I mean, you're looking at Sim, you're looking at Snowzine, you're looking at Sato. All great duelists amongst others here currently playing in the Ascension Tournament. But now, as we focus back in this round, we're round number 18 and TSM backs against the wall. And even against the walls of the H Hulk of Ascent. Because they just are playing not to lose at this point. And thankfully, they're able to find a timing to get the pick onto Maurice. Okay, keeping just the vision there. They actually think somebody's just going to run by, but they don't do that. Snow's in. He's going to have to back themselves away. They can't get the shots they did before, but they can work for it. Is this it for TSM? It might just be. They only have one Vandal left available. Snow's in is there. Finally bringing out the shorty, but they do get taken down, down to pick up. Yeah. And it might be it. One player super low, a proto. Delayed so well, and there's a flank coming I through. I know exactly where you are. They have it. Beautiful from Delzik. A flank to solidify everything they had worked for. And it's got to be a beauty. It's got to feel really good to run away from this. <laughs> After yesterday, literally getting, like, demolished. And it, 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 it's great. 100%. You're definitely seeing it here. I mean, when you're looking at the long run and how things came through here for Reda, you almost know that blind potentially was not going to be a map that was going to be in their favor but you see what came through when they won the first map how they're setting up right now looking at the third map they definitely were restless going into today's game after the loss that they had against 2g yesterday and came back out in full force and looked really good against tsm you see how much it means to them big smiles i mean if they actually lost this map against tsm going through this is group stages they go at 0 and 2 and that's, that's such a big map and round differential in terms of disadvantage because of the spanking that they got against 2G just yesterday. So getting this win is going to help them stay in that race to move into the playoffs, into the top four. 
Listen, I honestly, coming into this, I, I was more happy that we finally got to see a bit of lay time extend with Brazil, right? Being able to kind of watch the worlds collide. But not only yeah. that, we also get to see the skill and the talent that these players have. And and honestly, we get to finally see whether or not <laughs> NA is superior. And I think, I think listen, exactly. it's not over just yet. It, it, it was a close game. TSM, they definitely fought their hearts out. But I want to hear what the analyst does, does have to say about this. So take it away, guys. It is Reta who get the win and they get the first win for them on Ascension on this day too. And it looked really good. Honestly, we talked about it towards the beginning of the day. We talked about the inconsistency that sometimes we see from Reta. So whatever we saw yesterday, you need to erase from your brain, go again. And this is exactly what they did. The team looked a lot more coordinated. We got to see different compositions, different ideas and different answers Uber to what the other side of TSM was bringing to them. Yeah, absolutely. I think out of the gates, we were already skeptical about the, the lack of information gaining capacity that this double controller comp has from Reta. But then Viper Wall over towards the A side is constantly implying a lurk. It's, it's a similar idea to what we saw from teams on Lotus, and it's always keeping one or two TSM players at that A side because they're never really sure. Uh, and that, that was really hard for them to deal with because they're already so stretched across this map in general, right? TSM tried to counter this with some like early aggression, but like going aggressive on the A side was awkward at times. You saw them get into these heavy trades. The Viper Wall was like annoying for them to navigate. And then they're dealing with the rest of Reta, who are, again, continuing to play really well. Like, more sick pistol rounds coming out from Snowzine, for example. A guy was really starting to fire up, and Sim wanted to get involved. He was trying to get involved in a lot of that early action. But, again, at best, at Neon, sometimes it feels like you're just making space and trading yourself. And that honestly was kind of the story for Sim on many of those engagements. Not what TSM are looking for in this kind of map. You can see here, I mean... TSM had a very short attacking round, right? They had two rounds they managed to plant, and they were great. But outside of that, they kept getting cut off short by this Reta team who just dominated them on the offense side because that A side is so annoying to retake. It's so difficult. So, of course, TSM are going to try and anchor that site with a couple of players, play off that Proto Cypher util, but they have to stay there. And that means that Reta can go anywhere else on the map they want and cause chaos and hit those sites instead. Yeah, I mean, it, they were struggling. It, it was very clear, you know, maybe this is a, a composition they don't get a lot of reps against. I, I personally can't think of a lot of teams in NA that are running Viper on Haven, at least at this point in time, right? So this was a, a very, very good call from the leadership over at Reta, the coaching staff and the IGL to pull out this comp against TSM. I mean, uh, it was just absolutely a masterclass from these guys. A snow zine. Wow, uh, 200, uh, let's see, let's see, 298 ACS across three maps. What a stud. This entire series, all three maps, even when they're losing on Bind 13-6, just putting up absolute monster numbers. I mean, these Latin American duelists, what is in the water over there, Dan? I mean, there's something going on down there. Yeah, he's looking good. I mean, he's hyped up. He's feeling it. You see even the A's that he got on the map too. I feel like ever since then, we just saw him standing up, yelling, celebrating all those important rounds for the set of Reta. And you need this. And I love this because this is a big contrast in the team. You have players like Snowzin, who's getting hyped up and standing up. And you have Delsig that, if you don't know, in Latin America, we used to call him and we still call him the snowman. He's just cold calm collected cold. and it's a pretty pretty big contrast between the two so now you have those kind of emotions play out and it is allowing snows in to just be set up for success in so many times and i love to see i don't know what's in the water honestly because i i didn't get that water when i was growing up that's for sure but snows in uber i think it's great and you need to keep an eye on him for the next couple matches absolutely and that's why they kind of picked up this play when i first started watching the retro games i was like this reminds me a little bit of a qck like I, mean, I guess like physically resembles him in some ways, but also he would like had these games where he'd have big impact, yeah. but he was solid. He was serviceable, you know, didn't have these like high flying performances. And I wish I dug a little bit deeper because now we're starting to see that level of performance from this guy. Quick shout out as well, uh, you know, to Suta on that last map. Uh, take out the lurking role and winning three out of four of his first kill, first death scenarios, just being that, that lurking Viper, really, really sick. But this is what we were looking for yesterday is what wasn't present. Sometimes Snowzine seems like he's being confined, constrained by his team structure. They're more slower style of play. He looks like the odd one out wanting to, you know, go aggressive and make things happen. But he's integrated beautifully today. It looks like he's just a, well, a cog of this well-oiled machine. Absolutely fantastic showing across all three maps.
Yeah, I think that's a good point. I mean, a lot of times you see Snowzine going off, looking for kills, especially when he's on these movement duelists, right? He'll get a little bit away from the pack, a little bit ahead of himself, ahead of his team. But, you know, th this was not Snowzine in, in a solo capacity. This was Snowzine being utilized as a weapon as part of a five-man team. And that's what we fucking love to see from these guys. I mean, this is the Retta that we expected, not the Retta we saw yesterday. This is the Retta that we expected coming into this Ascension tournament to be a dominant force and something to go up against the likes of M80 and TSM and all these other teams that, you know, have been looking so phenomenal coming into this uh, Ascension tournament in Mexico. And I feel like a lot of players, a lot of people in general are still getting to know these players. So that's why I like to see his nose and getting highlighted as much because he is an amazing player, has been pretty good for the team throughout the year. And it was also a, a crazy decision to make when you have this mix between Latin America and Brazil and you bring this player that is unknown, that is still underage and playing and performing to this level, winning matches the way that he just did against TSM. It's great to see, but this is everything that we have for the first match of the day between TSM and Reta. We're going to throw to a break. We're going to have an interview be with one of the players and then we'll move into the second one we'll see you then oh shoot um probably when i was like seven years old or something like that that girl from bakugan whatever her name the blue haired girl from bakugan like when i was really young probably that was like the first like cartoon that i like that's what got me into anime too so oh my god i don't know in english the name but it's uh o nome da personagem de do Phantom. Phantom, do you know Danny Phantom? Yeah, the the his girlfriend, I guess. Yeah, Samantha. <laughs> wow. Cartoon crush. It's kind of a crazy question. Um I would have to say like back in the day when I was like ten years old, I'd be watching Inuyasha, an anime. It'd have to be like Kagome or something, the girl that he was always falling for, Inuyasha. Oh that's a weird question, man. That's a weird question. Okay. Like Crash, like I think Didi from Dexter's Lab, I think it's called in English. Yeah, it has to be Didi. Yeah. God, I'm fast today, man. Carly, I Carly, bro. I have no idea. Let me think. Let me think. Give me a give me a second. Ah, oh, uh, I know I had a big crash. Uh, maybe you know Misty from Pokemon. That's a good one, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Cartoon Crush? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I've had one, I'm not gonna lie. I'll probably have to go with Peter Griffin. <laughs> cartoon Crush, that's a good one. I think there was a, there's a, there was a cartoon in Brazil that was like a... I don't know the name in English, but it was like Tres, tres Espiões de Mais, uh, there's something like that. And maybe something... something... someone from there, but I don't really remember too much. So. Cartoon crush, maybe like like Doctor Doofenshmirtz's like daughter, like from from Phineas and Ferb, be her. Oh, <laughs> I wasn't prepared for that question. Um, uh, I don't know either Jet or or Sage.
Hi guys, I'm here with Snow Sin. He just won his first match against TSM. And I want to ask him, the first question I'm going to ask him is, what was the difference between today and yesterday? What did they talk also uh, after yesterday's game? And what, how did they prepare for today? Então, Snow Sin, me fala qual foi a diferença entre ontem, hoje também, o que vocês falaram é, para o um match de hoje? É, o que a gente falou foi que ontem, quando a gente estava fazendo o nosso VOD Review, a, gente, a única coisa que a gente podia perceber é que a equipe que jogou ontem não era a equipe que joga todos os dias, não é a equipe que jogou o ano inteiro, não é a equipe que jogou bem contra todos os times da franquia, contra todos os times nos trends, era a equipe que se preparou. E hoje, a diferença é que a gente impôs nosso jogo e saiu para ser a reta de verdade. Yesterday we watched our match and it really wasn't us. We were not playing like that. And we just came today with everything that we had. Uh, and we just played like we normally play, but we weren't playing like Reta. Uh, the second question that I want to ask him is that we know that he's a really, really good operator player. And uh, he's one of the best from the world, entire world. And I want to ask him if Does he feel like that, like the best operator of the world? Então, eu não sei, você tá entre os melhores operators do mundo. Você tá se sentindo como o melhor operator do mundo? É, obviamente que para mim, eu sempre vou me sentir o melhor operator do mundo, porque eu trabalho muito e para mim eu sempre vou ser o melhor. Mas é óbvio que pelo mundo tem vários operators bons também. I really feel like I'm the best operator for me. Of course, there are others operators that are really good, but for me, I'm always going to be the best. Muito obrigada. It's everything for us right now. We're going back to the live stream. Thank you. They say in life, there are no guarantees. They say a lot of stuff like that. Slow it down. Play it safe. Hedge your bets. So what? You gonna listen to that? You gonna stop because they can't guarantee you'll pull this off? No guarantee you'll win. No guarantee everything's gonna be fine. your own guarantees. Nobody else will light your way. Start your own fire and keep it burning. And we guarantee you'll have one hell of a lifetime.